to see you all. You know, every day I feel so grateful that we live in a country where each region is so rich in its own culinary traditions. The Prairies is one of Canada's biggest hotspots, and it is celebrated in this beautiful new cookbook, Prairie. Please welcome co-author and Globe and Mail restaurant critic for the Canadian Prairies, Dan Clapson. <laughs> Oh my gosh, first off, excellent bolo tie. Thank you. It's, I mean, I had to, rep the prayers, you, you know? Oh, you have to yes. do it. Yep, absolutely. So you are originally from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. and now you live in Calgary, correct? Mm -hmm. So you're spanning the whole prairies. Yeah, you know, I, I grew up in Saskatchewan, I've lived in Calgary my whole adult life, and mm -hmm. I've really fallen in love with the prairies as a whole. So whether it's uh, Winnipeg and Manitoba, mm -hmm. or all over Alberta, Saskatchewan, there's so many amazing things happening there, and I'm lucky enough to write about all that. So I channeled that love of the prairies into this book. That's amazing. Yeah. Honestly, it's such a beautiful book. Thank Flipping you. through it, there's so many good recipes. It's seasonal, it represents so much of the delicious flavors and things that are grown there. I am biased, but it is quite a nice book. Yeah, <laughs> you you can be. It's yes. like your book, baby. Yeah, exactly. You worked hard on this, baby. <laughs> we wanted to organize it seasonally, though, because a lot of people, regardless of where you live in Canada, a lot of these ingredients you can access where you're from. Mm -hmm. So summer is a great time of year. Obviously, you can get everything. Mm -hmm. By fall, there's a little bit less of ingredients, and winter less, and spring hardly any. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to help you get creative, regardless of what season of year it was. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So you're going to cook a couple recipes from this book. What yes. are we doing? What are we starting with? So we're going to start off with meatloaf. So I love meatloaf. It's one of my favorite comfort foods, and when I moved out of my parents' house when I was 19, it was one of the first things I learned to cook properly, aside from, you know, mac and cheese. A bo yeah, a box of <laughs> yeah, mac and cheese. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I've since put a prairie twist on this meatloaf, and again, what I like to do that's a little bit different is, of course, you add your onions, garlic, and seasoning and whatnot, mm -hmm. but I like to cook it down first before I add it into the mixture. I love that, because mm -hmm. you're building flavor. Absolutely. But you're also building, you're still getting that moisture, but it's not as, like, um, crunchy moisture. So you don't need as much uh, of a binder to make up for that. So if you're using crackers or something people crush up potato chips and stuff, you don't yeah. have to use a lot of that. We're going to use ground lentils instead, actually. Amazing. Yeah. That's perfect. So we've got our onions yes, sweated we do. down. Yes, we do. So what we're going to do is add a bit of barbecue sauce. I'm a equal opportunist when it comes to barbecue sauce. Mm -hmm. So just use whichever one you like. Oh, so, I like that. Yeah, this one has some maple because Canada. You Canada. Know, that makes sense. So that is true. Add that in there as well as some tomato paste just to amp up, amp up, pardon me, that tomato flavor. Amazing. And Put I love tomato paste. It's super um, cooked tasting. You know what I mean? Yes. Some, a robot or a machine has cooked that down for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never know. <dope>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's also very inexpensive, so that's why it's a good staple in your house totally. for sure. Totally. And a touch of honey. Alberta is Ooh. known for having tons of honey producers, so I always like to be... I add a little sweetener to things like that. I there love we go. That. I've never done a little bit of honey in my meatloaf. Yeah, it's a nice little touch. You yeah. know? See, stick with me, you'll learn a few things. Oh man, Dan, I'm learning already. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna cook this down by the magic of TV. We're gonna fast forward about 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take that mixture. We're gonna blend it up really quickly. You can use like a magic bullet or food processor, whatever you've got. Nice. We're gonna add this mixture straight into our ground chuck. That looks beautiful. There we go. How much chuck are you using here? We're using about a pound and a half in here. So, nice. Yeah. And we're gonna get two eggs cracked. Okay. Maybe we'll get you to do that. Perfect. And again. I'm gonna, I don't know if we can see here, this, the ground red lentils. This is quite unusual. That is unusual. Um, and it's not, you can find lentil flour in the grocery store, but the ground lentils, I like the texture that it holds in the meatloaf. When you cook it, you'll still get little flecks of lentils throughout. So. I love that. And the prairies grows tons and tons of lentils, right? Uh, absolutely. So Saskatchewan grows 95% of Canada's lentils. Yeah. And Canada grows most of the world's lentils. So, You're welcome, yeah, world. I, <laughs> We're bringing you lentils. I learned that every day in elementary school growing up. Listen, <laughs> I, that's what I call cocktail knowledge. You go to a party and you drop your lentil exactly. facts, and everyone will think you're so smart. <laughs> yeah. But I do love, like, again, if you're traveling to a place like London or mm -hmm. Paris and you go to a grocery store and you find lentils, they're probably from a place outside of Regina, which is kind of crazy. That's crazy, amazing. Hey? Yeah, that is so neat, cool. So. so we give this a good mix up? Yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah, perfect. Hands. We're going in. You go, you go on in. Okay. okay. Maybe add a bit of mustard. I forgot about that. Oh, but, you want oh. me to toss some mustard in? This is always the weirdest part about meatloaf, but I mean, I think when you cook with your hands, it's rewarding. Don't Listen, you think? I always say your hands are just forks <laughs> yes, yes. on the end of your arms. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect thing to use for mixing everything up. There we go. This is a good mix here. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, the smell yeah, coming off that and that tomato Yes, paste? yes. Yeah. I like the cooked down onion mixture. Oh. It's great. Okay, so that's pretty well mixed. Amazing. We're going to put it into a pan with parchment paper. You don't have to use parchment paper, but I find it's easier to remove the meatloaf after the fact, so I would, I would recommend it for uh -huh. sure. And so it doesn't turn into okay. ground meat, essentially. So it feels very Halloween y. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, there we go. There you go. I'm gonna flatten her down there. And that then, looks beautiful, the color yes, in there. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And again, once the lentils cook through, you'll see a nice flex throughout when it's on the finished product here. So Beautiful. Okay, maybe I'm going to you wash, go wash my hands and you pop that in the oven. Perfect. Okay. What are you popping it in the oven at? Uh, 375, 375 for about 45 right. minutes. 45? Yes. Oh, that's a good yes. meatloaf. We'll pop her in. <laughs> Hit. Oh my gosh, Dan, this old, this is the magic TV. We got a meatloaf in here right now. It smells so good. It smells like classic, delicious oh, meatloaf. Look at oh, this wow. little number. It does smell good. Oh, yeah, it does smell <laughs> good. Smells pretty good. <laughs> and one thing that I forgot to mention is that we're glazing this meatloaf every 15 minutes in the oven Amazing. with a mixture of brown sugar, yellow mustard, and a bit of butter. I think yellow mustard is a really underutilized condiment in the mm -hmm. kitchen. It's not, not just for hot dogs. Not just earlier. for hot yeah. dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so good. Too. That looks absolutely yes. amazing. Are you gonna slice up a I piece? so. Okay. See, and again, this is why we like parchment because it comes right out. Easy as pie. Make it simple, it's a little hot. Don't do oh, that at home. Got there we go. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> and now, let me get that out of the way. This is always the most stressful part. You just don't want it to fall apart. Fine. So let's all manifest a solid piece of meatloaf. Oh, okay. good job, everybody. Everyone's okay. fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, you guys did a good job. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Oh, oh look yeah, there at we that go. meatloaf. Oh. That's a plate there. Juicy, juicy. Yeah. There you go. Put one more on there. Oh, my gosh. That looks so juicy. You there see those little bits of lentils yes. in there? Yes, there we go. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. Smells great. That smells so good. Now, what do you do with your leftover meatloaf? So I'm a huge fan of meat meatloaf sandwiches, whether they're hot or cold. So grilled cheese, obviously, is an amazing option. Delicious. I did make, I don't think we can eat this on here, but I did make a meatloaf clubhouse. <gasps> Look at that, baby. <laughs> oh, my gosh. A little bit of yellow mustard on there, too? So I actually use the cold glaze <laughs> as the sauce because this, this cold works as a condiment as well. So, yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. with butter in it, yes. mustard and butter. Sign me up. That looks amazing. Dan. So we've got. Now we're moving into we're getting side a little healthier. dishes. Touch healthier. A little healthier. But I, I told you recently, um, and I told my husband, I'm in my potato era. Yes. And I, I love. love that. I, all I want to do is eat potatoes all day. Well, we can do that right now. Amazing. Okay, Let's per do it. Perfect. So we are going to make a potato salad. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's a that's a salad that most people know how to make. But again, we're doing a little bit of a prairie spin mm -hmm. on it. And this is technically a fall recipe, but fall can be a confusing season. Yeah. It can be warm or very cold. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping for warm fall weather with this potato salad. Amazing. So we're making uh, vinaigrette out of hummus as the base, which is also quite unusual. That is cool. Yeah. As opposed to that mayonnaise. Yes. And it's it's a nice nod to the fact that so many chickpeas are also grown mm -hmm. in the prairies. So mm -hmm. again, if you're looking for chickpeas in different countries, quite often they are actually from Canada. Very and, and cool. mostly from uh, Manitoba and Alberta. That's yeah. amazing. Okay, what are yeah. we adding into I here? I some fresh herbs. I have some tarragon, some mm. dill, mm. and some parsley. Delicious. And again, if you don't like tarragon, leave it out. Add mint. You know, you can be... You can adjust this to what you want. That's These recipes amazing. in this book, we try to be really approachable. A bit of canola oil, obviously, because prairie. You got to do canola oil if you're go. going in the prairies. Absolutely beautiful. Apple it's cider, my new Apple cider vinegar, pardon me. Delicious. There we go. Do y'all have apple trees too in the prairies? I mean, we do, but not Not, not like, here. like here. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. Ontario for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we love Ontario apple yeah. It's good. It's totally fine. Oh my God, this is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's gorgeous. Really easy to make. And this is this would be a good dip on its own with uh, pita or something, yes. or just even fresh vegetables. So when I boil the potatoes, mm -hmm. I actually, this is a good, uh, good hack. I put onion and garlic in with it as well, and it softens in the process, and it flavors the potatoes, of course, but you can just add them to the salad as well. I like layers of texture, and I think it's a nice element to oh, add. I agree. Yeah. Okay, pop those into that okay, bowl. Okay, here we go. In we go. And I'm seeing some vegetables yes. in addition. Yes, so I have some baby cucumbers, radishes. Oh. And we're going to add those in there, just for some color, and again, for texture. The texture, crunch. texture, texture. That's the thing. Yes. It doesn't just have to be a soft, boiled potato salad. Oh, my gosh, and this dressing smells so good. And it's pretty good for you, you know? Mm. So again, and this is a good example of how you can make a vegan recipe quite interesting oh, as well. Because you weren't even thinking about it, right? I wasn't. Oh, nice. See, there you go. Oh my gosh. And I like my salad pretty saucy, so maybe let's add a touch more. Listen, I also like my salad saucy. Yeah. The only salad I wouldn't overdress is like tender, tender greens. I even romaine. overdress yeah, that, okay, Dan. Okay. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and she takes, I love takes it. Takes so no much. prisoners. No, all dressing all the time. That, there we go. Oh my gosh, I gotta grab a fork. Yes. I gotta give this there a taste to real. Let me see if I can pop this in a bowl for Perfect. us here. Perfect. There we go. But yeah, you can just smell the fresh herbs, you can smell the hummus, and then the hummus itself has so much flavor in it when you buy it, right? So it's a nice foundation for That's a vinaigrette. That's I love. You've got there a you couple go. of store-bought hacks in there. Oh there my gosh, go. Dan, I love my potatoes. This is absolutely amazing, and this book is so beautiful. Thank you so much. And thanks to Dan, you're all going home with a yes. coffee. Thank you so much, Dan. Cheers to you and potatoes. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.